This is just about to move on and talk about other things. Uh, but I'd like to I'd like to sum up what he's been saying, or at least try to sum up what he's been saying, or just recap. He was talking about self-effort. He was talking about our psychology. And he was talking about how we can work with that psychology. He was talking about how we must take full responsibility for our current situation. He was saying how we should acknowledge our latent tendencies, how we've really got no choice but to um, behave in one way or another. But there's another, there's another aspect here. It's, it's as if we can step outside that psychology and we can start deciding which aspects of our psychology we want to encourage and which ones we don't. And I think this is what we, this is what most psychologists try to get people to do anyway, like go to them for some kind of assistance. So there seems to be an assumption here that there's a kind of overriding intelligence or an overriding awareness that somehow can step back from our own uh, psychological tendencies. I mean, it seems that psychologists and, and uh, other professionals make that make that assumption that we do actually have some kind of control. That once we become aware of a habit, for example, we can, once we've got that awareness, that awareness automatically gives us a perspective. And once we've got that perspective, we can then make some kind of change in our psychology. Which is, which is actually quite interesting. So that's on quite a psychological level. I, I would say though that in, in order to progress spiritually, there has to be some kind of spiritual awakening um, some kind of realization that what's generally on offer is actually of not of, of not much interest to us. Um, that there's there's a bigger picture to be embraced. That there's more to life than meets the eye. Actually, so let's proceed into cosmic waters. Vasishta continued. The cosmic order that people refer to as fate, daivam, or niyati. Um, so obviously, niyati is a Hindu word here, or a Sanskrit word. Uh, no translation is offered. I suppose it's another word for fate, daivam, or niyati. The cosmic order that people refer to as fate, daivam, or niyati and which ensures that every effort is blessed with appropriate fruition is based on omnipresent and omnipotent omniscience known as Brahman. By self-effort therefore restrain the senses and the mind and with a mind that is one-pointed calmly listen to what I'm going to say. Now this is something new that's been introduced here. The omnipotent, omnipresent omniscience known as Brahman. Now this is different from Brahma, um, Brahma the Creator. Uh, Brahman is not an entity. It's sometimes translated as the Absolute. It's that from which all things arise. And uh, Vasishtha is going to go into that in a bit. In a bit. In fact, there's a lot about Brahman later on in the Yoga Vasishta. Um, I, I was watching a, a documentary series on the television recently called The Atom. It was a three-part series, which was, which I thought was really well done. And uh, one of the final things that was 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 described was the nature of the vacuum. 
the, the physicist that was presenting the program was saying that there's no such thing as nothing. And this is interesting, isn't it? We sometimes think of outer space as full of nothing, or even the atom as being mainly empty space. But empty space apparently is, is not nothing. It's full of something called the quantum foam. And what this consists of is little par particles coming into being and, and disappearing out of existence almost instantaneously. And they've actually apparently established the existence of this quantum foam. So this, uh, this, this idea of something coming out of nothing which physicists seem to have embraced. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Brahman. Um, anyway, we want to focus, restrain the senses and the mind and focus on what physicists has got to say. This narrative deals with liberation. Listening to it with other wise seekers who are assembled here, you will realize that supreme being where there is no sorrow nor destruction. This was revealed to me by the creator Brahma himself in a previous age. So it seems that this is what we want to get in touch with. We want to get in touch with Brahman. Um, I think it's probably better to think in terms of Brahman than quantum form. Rama. The omnipres om omnipresent omniscience or the cosmic being shines eternally in all beings. So this is a, this is something we should stick, be aware of when we're talking about these cosmic things. We're not talking about things out there in outer space. We're talking about things central to our being. So this cosmic Brahman is actually what is shining in all of us and it shines internally. When a vibration arises in that cosmic being, Lord Vishnu is born, even as a wave arises when the surface of the ocean is agitated. From that Vishnu, Brahma the Creator was born. Brahma began to create the countless varieties of animate and inanimate, sentient and insentient beings in the universe. And the universe was as it was before the cosmic dissolution. In Hinduism, the universe comes into being, it expands, and then eventually, after aeons, uh, it dissolves, and then it all begins again. It's like endless big bangs, um, one big bang after another, or almost like the universe breathes into existence and then expires, then breathes back into existence. And, and so we've got various levels of, of existence here. We've got the cosmic Brahman, it's a bit like the quantum foam, and then we've got the Vishnu, which is maybe like the Big Bang. I better not go into that kind of uh, parallels. And then we've got things being created, maybe the elements and sentient and the sentient beings. The Creator saw that all living beings in the universe were subject to disease and death, to pain and suffering. In his heart there arose compassion and he sought to lay down a path <clears throat> that might lead living beings away from all this. <clears throat> he thereupon instituted centres of pilgrimage and noble virtues like austerity, charity, truthfulness and righteous conduct. But these were inadequate. They could bestow only temporary relief from suffering on people and not final liberation from sorrow. It looks like the Yoga Vasishta here is having a little go at the uh, standard religious practices that were prevalent at the time. Austerity, charity, truthfulness and righteous conduct. Uh, they're noble virtues and um, they're all well and good by themselves but they don't lead us to final liberation. 